Welcome to Malmo Arena. We have come to Sweden for the Eurovision Song Contest. So let's start the show. We have a packed program for you today. Indeed, we will be taking a look at the history of the Eurovision Song Contest, Sweden's results history, and also how the UK has fared over the years. Paul will also be reviewing his favorite songs in the contest. Some of them might not even have survived until the <laughs> final. And we will be taking a look around Malmo itself. So if you are planning to be here or coming to Malmo in the coming weeks and months, you will see what there is around. Well, Malmo Arena is based in an area of Malmo called Hilia, and it's only two stops by train from the Central Railway Station. There is also a shopping centre here, and we will be taking a look at that later in the episode. So let's take a look around Malmo. If you're visiting Malmo itself, you will probably arrive by train and we are at Malmo Central Station and I have spotted something absolutely fabulous just outside. Look at this! Isn't this amazing? These are little benches and they're in the shape of a train. You can see the engine and a carriage and there's more than one of them. There's one over there and there's some other ones as well. Why don't you sit down Paul and demonstrate? So you could just use it as a normal bench or you could actually drive the train. <laughs> this is quite a grand building, Central Station. And since we've been here, we've actually been taking the train quite a lot before we've actually uh, just done this little segment. And there are restaurants in there, including O'Leary's. Quite expensive though, if you want to eat in the station, unless you go to one of the little stalls that sell food. And they also have that. Or oh yes, there's a co-op as well. They have like a few um, eateries inside as well. And they're a little bit cheaper than the restaurants. So we are staying at the elite hotels of Sweden, the Savoy Hotel, right over this bridge. And it is a fabulous place, very close to Malmo Central Station. We're staying at the Hotel's Annex, which is actually quite a big building in itself and you can see a full review in an upcoming hotels episode So Paul, what is this building over here? According to my Google Maps thing, I think it's called Torgbrunnen. And what is that? Torgbrunnen? It just says that it's a historical landmark. Ah, right. So that's not the town hall. I think it's further into the city. If this was in Glasgow, there would be a traffic cone on its head. like this they should all be playing wind instruments <laughs> <Woodwind>. <laughs> I 
lots of streets here in Malmö. And we're filming this on a Sunday and a lot of the shops are actually closed. So you can probably imagine that on a Saturday or maybe around lunchtime on a weekday, yeah, it would be a lot busier than this. So I am not exactly sure whether I'm pronouncing this correctly, but I believe this brand is called Auckland's, Auckland's City. And this is one of those big department stores that is scattered all around Sweden. So let's go in and take a look. Well, just like our hotel, H&M has got one of these coverings over it because they must be doing some work behind the scenes. And it's a really good idea rather than just having an ugly load of scaffolding. And this seems to be perhaps the main square in Malmo. It's quite big. There are, there's a mini fountain that we just saw. And there are some shops and cafes, cafes yeah, over there. And the there seems park. to be a park behind us as well. And it's great that the sun has come out today. We've had rain while we've been here. Now look at this feature. Speaking of something wet, they do like their naked statues in Sweden. Oh, and look at these absolutely gorgeous flowers. I think these might be tulips. Don't you normally have tulips in Amsterdam? Tulips in Malmo. So Paul, that building that we saw earlier on that you said wasn't the town hall. It was. Look at all these vibrant colors. Aren't they fabulous? Toilets, if you need them, always very, very handy. And if we cross the road over here, it yeah. seems to be that there is another part of the park, or maybe it's a different park. So we have to be careful crossing the road. There's no buses coming at the moment. There's one over there. And when I'm in a country where they drive on the right, I never really know which way to look, first of all, when I'm crossing the road. Do I look left or do I look right? Is that bus leaving or is it staying? Nope. Paul's walking on. And we come over to this other side of the park. Oh, Gamla Cryo Garden. Cryo Garden. Oh, I see, of course, Kirk means church. I think it's a cemetery, side. right. Sorry, yeah, I don't think we should go there. We shall let them rest in peace. This must be a popular interchange for the bus routes. It's lunchtime and we are looking for something to eat. The restaurants are rather pricey uh -huh. in Sweden. Yeah. And that means that we may only eat out like that at night. You're talking about 50 pounds a pop basically for a couple of main meals and a couple of drinks or even one Certainly drink sometimes. Maybe we should consider McDonald's or something. Uh, maybe not McDonald's, but you did say that there are some the eateries around this area over here which aren't exactly well, sit in. Well, there's a McDonald's or a Burger King down there. I just saw. What about China Box? This is outside. Got a list here. Um, so that is around about nine or ten pounds. 129. So you can take that as your marker. See? I was right. Maybe we should. You've got like cashew chicken, pad thai shrimp, fillet of pork tiger prawns, duck with rice or fries. So there's quite a big selection there. You can even have a strong beer. Glass of wine. Should we have one? 65. And we have more inside. It's a big box restaurant. What do you yes. think? And this is from the hours of 11 to 8. 
So it's an all day affair. Okay, I think we should go in. Yeah. We're going down a side street now because I noticed signs for Magners and O'Hara's and Kilkenny Red yeah, and, Guinness. and Guinness. And you know something, when you see Kilkenny Red, you know that you must be at an Irish pub that's not in Ireland because I have <laughs> never seen Kilkenny Red in Ireland. It's only me. So this place is called Fagan's. Welcome to Fagan's Irish pub and restaurant. And there seems to be a lot of activity taking place outside. But Paul, look, I really love this sign here. You've got the old Guinness Pelican. That is one of the Pelican. classics. Oh yeah, that's one of the classic oh, right, yeah. Guinness signs. Mamma mia, oh my goodness, look. There is an ABBA museum here, but it seems to be closed. Uh, Paul, is this another department store, do you think? Swenson's. Again, 20 minutes. We better go and have a look. This is fabulous. Look at this. This is an old cine reel camera. Oh. Yeah. This is amazing. Look at all the decorative ceiling up there. I think it's a furniture store, actually, yeah, so. or a homeware store. Mm. But there's a real sense of calm in here. It's lovely. So what do you think of the streets of Malmo, Paul? Yeah, it's quite good. Um, it's not overly busy considering it's a Sunday. Exactly. And uh, this is something which I can cope with, I think, because I really don't like the crowds. Mm. But it is relatively <coughs> decently quiet here today, this Sunday afternoon. And it helps that it's quite warm now as well. Yes. A Lila toy. So what's this building here then, you think? I don't know. Peak Performance? Oh, Peak, Peak Performance? performance it's a store. shop, I think. Yeah. It looks like an old sort of like barn or something. And what is down here where the dog's going? Lila Tor. This is another shopping street? I think so. Well, let's take a look at this one. The Arab Film Festival has been taking place. It must be down here. There must be like a, a cinema or something. It seems busy down there because of all those um, tents down there. Oh, the stalls down there. Oh, sorry. Maybe. Yeah, well, I'm just thinking back to the one time that we were in Malmo about 15 or 16 years ago. And right all there. I remember of it is that we went into some sort of indoor center and we bought pastries. Didn't I get a bag? Oh, you got a bag? What sort of bag? I think I got the Beyond Borg bag. The one ah, that I brought. right. Oh, look at this. What is it? Butterix? Oh, it's fancy dress. Oh, look at this. Is that like Abba? I don't know, but what I would say is that all the nice boys like a sailor. And that looks like a couple of sailors there, if you ask me. He's got his little pink friend. There is actually some sort of like sailing theme here in Sweden, I've noticed. There's lots of cuddly toys wear these little captain's hats. <laughs> I wonder what the significance is. A boarding country? Well, possibly. Look at this one. Oh, do they sell a helium machine? Look at this. That could, be, that could make your voice. Do you want to check this out? Yeah, so let's take a look. Is it open? Another five minutes. Five minutes. Well, we did manage to get a couple of things, didn't we, Paul? Are we going to show the viewers what we've got? This lovely hat and... <laughs> <laughs> it's a burlesque hat, actually. <laughs> and I think we will find a purpose for that at some point. And you also got 
some glitter spray for your hair. Oh, this is gonna damage my hair. <laughs> this is silver and they had various colors. There was pink, blue, yellow, purple, purple green. and glitter uh, colors as well, silver and gold. But you decided to get the gray one. So does that mean that you want to go gray? I mean silver. Oh. <laughs> Didn't know they had an office at Depot in Sweden. No, neither did I. Isn't it American? I think so. I think they used to have it in the UK and then it became something else. I'm not sure. Or am I yeah. thinking of stables? Anyway, we are now coming down to this rather wonderful, I don't know if what you'd call it, like a market square, I suppose. Square. And you know something? I am getting a slight vibe that this is the area that we went to all those years ago. I don't know what it is. There's just something telling me. Because this looks like sort of old Malmo. Look at the the building here. And there's lots of outdoor seating areas for restaurants. Oh yeah. And I'm also getting a bit of a vibe. It feels a little bit like Lille. Sort of. Because there's the big open squares in Lille, or one particular one, where there's all the eating areas. So I reckon if we go this way down here, there is a building with flags. Look at those trees. Absolutely wonderful. It's a kind of a lilac color yeah. flower. Maybe someone will write in in the comments to say what this is. And look at this as well, this ring, ring still tele, well, it's a telephone box, yeah. <laughs> I think. Does it open? Is there a phone in there? No. So this is, it says it's a model from 1901. I can get in. Oh, oh dear, I can't get out now. Let's go. It's a bit like the TARDIS in there. Very interesting phone box that was. So we'll continue walking down because in front of us now, there seems to be some other sort of square the buildings look a little bit more modern. Yeah. There are cars parked. I don't know if it's just a car park. There's also a police car, so we better be careful. Were we here before? Well, the, well we passed the town hall on the other side. We were over there, were we? Yeah. Oh, right. So we just walked down a different street. I love this sign over here. I don't know what it's for, but it says, ah, f ah, well, I suppose you can't go to Malmo or anywhere else without going into a souvenir shop. Well, look at this. Lots of different places to visit and it shows you the distance from Malmo, Tallinn, 821 kilometers. I can't make out what the others are. I can see Port Adelaide. I, I I'm guessing that's Florence. Australia. Florence, yes. 1,324 kilometers. Well, to round off this first part of our look around Malibu, we've just had some coffee at Espresso House and you had a... Matcha latte. I really didn't like it. You don't like it because no. you don't like the green stuff. Exactly. Don't get caught spying on someone's YouTube channel. Just subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's Paul and Marcus. Sweden has a rich history in the Eurovision Song Contest. Let's take a look at some of their previous winners.
Sweden has won the Eurovision Song Contest seven times and has tied with Ireland for the most number of victories. The most recent Swedish success was in Liverpool in 2023, when Loreen took the trophy thanks to a mesmerising performance of her song Tattoo. She became the first woman to win the competition twice, having previously triumphed in Baku, Azerbaijan in 2012 with Euphoria. But the most famous Swedish victory goes to ABBA, who won with Waterloo when the contest was held in Brighton in the United Kingdom in 1974. Sweden's other winners were Heres in 1984, Carola in 1991, Charlotte Nilsson in 1999, and our personal favourite, Mans Zelmerlo, who won with Heroes in 2015. Who knows who will lift the trophy this year? So what do you know about the Eurovision Song Contest? Here's Marcus to explain. The Eurovision Song Contest began as a technical experiment in television broadcasting, as an effort to unite Europe after the Second World War. The first contest was held on May the 24th, 1956, and saw seven nations compete. The Netherlands, Switzerland, Belgium, Germany, France, Luxembourg and Italy. Austria and Denmark wanted to take part but missed the deadline and the United Kingdom sent their apologies as they were busy with their own contest that year. The 68th Eurovision Song Contest for 2024 comes from Malmo, Sweden by virtue of Lorene's win for the country last year. It is tradition that the winning country hosts the following year's contest. Have that empire state of mind. So please subscribe. So I have reviewed some of the songs from both semifinals. So the first one that we are going to start with is Croatia. And the artist is called Baby Lasagna. And he has this song called Rim Tim Taggy Dim. It's a fast-paced tempo and it's and I'm not entirely sure what the lyrics are about but the singer is kind of cute and um, I think he's trying to say that you need to keep moving forward and that and that there's no point going back or looking back. The second song that I'm going to review is by Belgium by an artist called Musti and it is entitled before the party's over. So I did enjoy the words of the song and it's about one more drink. Are you still playing this game or or are we breaking the rules? So it was kind of catchy, but I didn't really understand what the lyrics were about either. Um, so that is song number two that I sort of liked. Here is one that I think will stand out and it is by the Netherlands and it's by Just Klein and it is called Jeropapa. So it so he uses a lot of different European languages. I think he spoke a little bit in French, Italian, um Dutch, German. So he's kind of nerdy and it's kind of quirky in a really nerdy kind of way and it's basically about how we're all connected in Europe and it's very fast-paced there's a lot of energy um, and it's about Europe without borders which is what this competition is about this is the one that I really like and it's the entry for Finland and it is by Windows 95 man, their song is called No Rules. So there are two singers and it is super fast paced and it is an homage to how you need to be true to yourself and it's like a F you to society and you should do what you want and it's very catchy. So they're basically 
telling you to question everything, you need to be comfortable with yourself. And they had lots of pyrotechnics and it was just a very nice Eurovision song. I must talk about the Sweden's Eurovision Song Contest entry, which is Marcus and Martinez, and their song is called Unforgettable. In the video that I watched, there were lots of black and white strobing effects, and it was very upbeat, and the background reminded me of the Matrix, the movie, and it's very easy to follow along with, and the words are great as well. Marcus and Martinez are twins, and they are not from Sweden, they are from Norway. Did you know that? And finally, it would be remiss of me not to mention Ali Alexander, who is representing the UK in this year's song contest. And his song is called Dizzy, and there is a, uh, there is like a fast paced type of feel to it, and it is a nice dance tune. I did like the choreography and it is also a nice catchy song so stay tuned for that in the actual song contest of course perhaps malmo should be known as the windy city it's certainly very windy today well let's take a look around at more places that we discovered We are on our way to Malmo Harbour Lookout. There is a lighthouse up there and apparently there are some fantastic views of the waterfront. <laughs> it says pant. I think that that means to donate. Oh really? In a bin? <laughs> to recycle. I mean. Oh I see. Still rather windy this evening. We've come out a few hours later on the same day here in Malmo. University. The university is over there and we've got fishermen down here as well. And there's some geysers over there. Geysers? No, the... Oh, yes. <laughs> and this is a really interesting looking boy. I've not seen one that looks quite like that before. Shall we take a closer look? This boy is on a ladder. What do you think this is, this marking? Is it some sort of game? Oh, it's a path. It's like, instead of following the yellow brick road, although there is some yellow up there, maybe it's followed the blue path to the harbour lookout. What do you think? Yeah. So there seem to be like yellow breakout areas with a little umbrella. What's the purpose of that? To provide shelter in case it rains along the way. There are lots of these little lots umbrellas. Yeah. And it looks as though down here, there's like something else on the ground as well. Some sort of words. I don't know what this is. It's all Swedish to me. Are you feeling tired of me, Paul? <laughs> no. Or maybe I am just a big Boar. You said it, I didn't. It may say boar, but this is a fabulous boat. In fact, there's some information about it here. I think this is an old... I think this might be an old paddle steamer, to be honest. Because look, it's got the funnel. So we have to cross this bridge. Cross this bridge here, and then... Do we head up this way? Zoom because out. Oh yes, it's up here, isn't it? So it's like up there, I think. Yeah. And I see an absolutely fabulous lighthouse. Do we cross the road, first of all, do you think? Or do we cross we the could, bridge? We could cross the road. So we're crossing this little bridge now, and I love this lighthouse. Mm. It reminds me of the one at Donica D. <laughs> or is it blue and white? I can't remember now. I think it is red. 
Now this is interesting. This building over here is called Story Hotel. And it was one of the landmarks I had on the map when I was trying to see where the harbour lookout area was. And if you look up at the top, it says studio. Now that's interesting because you said, Paul, that over there in the distance, you can see SVT. Because when I turned on the channels in the hotel room, I think I remember seeing SVT1 or something. And so if we were in Scotland, it would be STV. <laughs> Anchors away. I don't think we're going to see a beach, but there is a nice little shoreline here with rocks. They do like their flowers in Sweden as well. Another bridge. Yes, Paul, look at this. A different type of structure, but you know what it is? Look, it is the curvature of an old paddle steamer. Yeah. Yeah and there are flags flying for SVT. Watch out for the bikes. Yes, there's lots of bikes coming. Ah, name of the bridge as well. Lots of flags flying for SVT. I think you're right. This is the TV channel over there. They've got a clock so you can see it says 7.25 in the evening and it's lovely in daylight even if it is clouding over a little bit now but the question is it's all very well finding this nice little area to walk along but is there going to be anywhere to eat do we go up here do you want to go to the lookout or should we not bother well i don't think that there's anything down there down where down by the lookout there's nothing down by the lookout apart from the lookout would you like to go anywhere <laughs> Well, we got this far. I've got the light on. As long as it's not dark by the time we get back. So let's try to do this in about 10 minutes. So they've got all these, um, I don't know, what are they called? Anchors. They're not really anchors. Uh, this is where they would tie up boats along here, I guess. And in the distance, there is quite a large ferry, I guess that is, over there. But over this side, Paul, over this side, Paul, you can see the lighthouse and the station was over there and the city is over that direction. You've got to be very careful along here. <laughs> it's a sheer drop. And uh, if you're standing or like you're walking along holding a camera like I am, uh, you've got to really watch your feet as well because one false move and- You can smash your camera too. Well, you'd be in the water. I might like, drown, Paul. Well, it looks as though we've got to the end of the the end of the road here. There's some really interesting little buildings. There's sort we're of not we're not climbing. No, that's private property. But it looks as though it is. I don't know. Some sort of accommodation, yeah. building accommodation, because there's some sort of site. There's all these security markers and things here, but. I guess it's new building. So if you turn around this way, I think we can get back up onto another street. Holy greens. Maybe there will be places to eat along here. It's closed now, but this looks like a nice little cafe. Dawkins Smoras Broad and Cafe. Open Monday to Friday, eight till four. This is kind of reminding me of one of those areas in the city of London where things, well, at least they used to not open at the weekends. They do now. Lots of new apartments over here being built. So that is what we saw at the other side. And it looks as though we're coming up to some sort of marina area. I see the sails on lots of ships. Perhaps there is life. This is an interesting piece of art. Look, it's in the shape of a fish. Yeah, there's its face. And this opens out into this lovely little marina area. There's a handy map. 
Are we here somewhere? I don't know. But I think this is the lookout right up here. So I guess if we just walk to the end, we'll get there. Wow, look at that tall building in the distance. It's wow. It's kind of like one of those um, curved buildings of some sort. Yeah, there really is interesting architecture that we've seen here in Sweden. I think, I think that's the Chrysler um, a brand. That's Mercedes Benz, is it not? Oh, oh, oh is it? Yeah. Oh, I'm not good you good. thought that was the Chrysler building, did you? <laughs> We're almost at the lookout now. And here we are. Looking out to sea. There's that ferry in the distance that we saw before. Some ducks have come out to see us. Look. They're swimming away now. There's only three of them. This one's trying to catch up. Ooh. That's quite a conversation taking place. So has it been worth the walk to get to the lookout? I don't know, yes or no. I thought that I thought that there would have been a lot better scenery to be seen. Well, I thought there might have been some restaurants and cafes that would be open because I think that we saw one. There is one which hopefully it'll be open by the time we go down. Otherwise, we'll have to go and eat at the station. <laughs> um, but it is more of a residential area, and there is some construction um, taking place. So they are building more flats. But all in all, I think it is quite a nice area to live in. Ali Alexander is representing the United Kingdom in this year's contest. Let's see how other entrants have fared in the previous years. Ali Alexander represents the United Kingdom at this year's Eurovision Song Contest with his upbeat single, Dizzy. The former Years and Years singer was perhaps a surprising choice for the competition because of his solo stardom. But he has proved to be popular with fans and perhaps he can become the UK's sixth winner. The UK has not won the contest since 1997 when Katrina and the Waves lifted the trophy with Love Shine a Light. Sam Ryder came close in 2022 when he finished second to Ukraine with Spaceman. And by virtue of that position, the 2023 contest was held in the UK on Ukraine's behalf. The UK's other Eurovision winners are Sandy Shaw in 1967, Lulu in 1969, Brotherhood of Man in 1976 and Bucks Fizz in 1981. If you are in the Malmo Arena area, you might want to go shopping as well. And look, right next door is Emporia, a very large shopping centre. Let's take a look.
Indeed we do. And also, good luck to the Swedish entry. Get off then. Is it Marcus and Martinus? Yeah, Marcus and Martinus. Mm. They say your name. Yeah. We real We do really wish Ali Alexander well with Dizzy. Indeed we do. And also, good luck to the Swedish entry. Good luck. Marcus and Martinus. That's a really good name, isn't it? <laughs> with, with their so unforgettable. And we really do hope it will be an unforgettable night. And we would like to also say thank you all for watching today's YouTube episode. For those of you that have liked the episode, give us a thumbs up. For those of you that have not subscribed already, Hit the subscribe button, it will really help us along our journey to get 1,000 subscribers. And for those of you that want me to leave a comment, please do so as well. And I think also it is time that we better go because my wig is about to fly off. We forgot to mention the coffee tip. You guys oh. felt generous about buying me and Marcus a cup of coffee yes, while we filmed. Yes, indeed, there is a link in the description. Well, the wind is getting up, my wig is about to fly away, and good luck to everyone <laughs> in Eurovision on Saturday night from Malmo. Bye. Okay, I think we are good to go.